I count this a privilege. And I am also persuaded that God will be giving us indelible encounters tonight. Very quickly. The Bible began to speak in the book of John chapter 1 from verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the word, the word, W-O-R-D. And the word was with God. Then it says that word was God. Verse 2. It says the same was in the beginning with God. Can somebody just say to your neighbor, all things were made by him. He says all things were made by him. And to reiterate that point, he says without him, there was not anything made that was made. So that particular you know, portion of scripture is suggesting to us that all things, including you, was made by the word. It was the word that was your building block. The word was the material that created you. It was only dust that formed you, but not creating. What created you is the word. And so you are as old as the material that created you. Because the word is there from the beginning. Listen, listen, let's not get excited. The devil is not as old as you. If we come in terms of wisdom, there is an ancient spirit, a wisdom before time began. But Satan is measured into time. Because there was a date that he was created. But the material they formed you with is older than time. And mind you, I will tell you how the word made you. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, scripture says, before you were formed. So this physical component of you, before it took shape, God says, there is a part of you I already knew, and I was fellowshipping with that part. He says, I knew you, I sanctified you, and I ordained you a prophet unto nations. However, how did God know that part? And where did that part come from? God never does anything except he sends words ahead of it. And the words that God speak, they become spirits and they are life. Every time God utters a thing, that word he says, become a spirit. The, the words carry the spirit to bring that thing to pass. And so, every time a situation is contemplated on, every time another challenge emerge, every time another prayer request rises up from the earth, when God speaks and says, I will clean the tears of this family, when God speaks and says, I will send a savior to them. When God speaks and says, I will resist the arm of the wicked. That word that God spoke becomes a spirit. And it becomes a life. And it begins to wait for a body. How was Adam created? Because there were many things concealed about the first Adam. Only the second Adam revealed certain things that were not divulged in the creation of the first Adam. How would you know the things that were not consistent, of course, or were not, you know, given to our knowledge in the creation of the first? Mind you, we just believe that God created man from the dust of the earth and then breathed into his nostrils and man became a living soul. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. However, before anything happened, the Bible says God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness let them have dominion as he was describing what he wanted to do he was creating the spirit of man because the words that god speak they become spirits and they are alive that was how the spirit component of that creature was formed then god molded man from the dust of the earth and when man was molded he was already alive the soul was not what activated life into him the moment he was molded, he was already alive. And I'll tell you why. No breath was given to the cattle. No breath was given to the fish of the sea. No breath was given to the birds of the air. But they contain a life, a biological life. A life that is moved only by hormones. And if God did not put a soul into man, he will only live for pleasures. He will be drawn by the, the impulses he feels per moment. And so God needed to step up his kind of life to a place where a spirit can rule over the appetite of the body. And so God breathed into the nostrils. The Bible did not say man became alive. It says man became a living soul. The spirit has been created by words. The body is formed from the dust. The soul was bread. It was bread that activated the soul. And so when this man is designed, the first thing you will make reference to, if you want to talk about the man, you must be able to assess 
the set of words they used to create his spirit. And that is where you will find the accurate purpose of a man. It is the set of words that they used to create his spirit. What God was describing that I would do in the earth. Those words that created his spirit would be left as a resonating voice, as a body. So he will carry a body that is not consistent with every other person. Everybody will have a unique thing that they are yearning. A unique thing that they are dissatisfied about. A unique challenge in the earth that they seek to solve. It is the voice of creation. That thing that they use to form you. That is what gives you your peculiar body. When man is created, the average man begins to wait. You know, parents gather and then they bestow a name on the child. Before that child was named physically, a coronation has happened. A ceremony happened in heaven. They gave him his name already. His name was the prophecy. This is why as ladies, as men, when that season begins to approach, a man must separate himself to the field quickly. Lord, who is coming? Who are you giving? If you get the name right, you have declared a prophecy. Heaven and earth must agree. There must be an alignment between the world of spirit and what men played out. Every time God brings a creature to Adam, he was waiting to see what he will call him. And whenever Adam gets it right, how are watchmen trained? Men who do business in deep waters, God will continue to test their seeing capacity. From time to time, he will say, son of man, what seest thou? Then the man will say the thing that he picked. If you get it, you will receive a commendation. You have seen well. We will need to isolate the counsel of God for our children. We will need to isolate a name that can activate that destiny. We lift up holy hands, highest praise to the King. We lift up holy hands. We lift up holy hands, highest praise to the King. We lift up holy hands. Highest praise to the King. And while I was preparing, my brother, a man I respect and honor so much, Pastor Sunday Owena, please celebrate him. He said I should um, send the uh, title of my message for the uh, sake of the media so that they can have, you know, some, some preparation. And the truth is, I, I didn't have a title then. So I started brainstorming. And most times, as Pentecostals, the title has to be catchy. <laughs> so I, I, I went into my library of names. I began to search for a name that can adequately portray the things and the body that is in my soul. And the truth is, the things I share with you today, it is a body God has put upon me. And so I would just, for the sake of you know, um, orderliness, I have to introduce a topic. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The title of my discourse tonight is The Price of Manifestation. I've taken a few minutes to establish the many-sided arguments and many-sided decisions that must come together before man even manifest in the earth. I've taken time also to establish how the various components of this being, this tripartite being, is formed. I've shown that man was a spirit first before he became anything. Let me build a little foundation just to buttress my point for those who are refusing, of course, to believe the things we're sharing. The first dimension of the Godhead that manifested to the ages is God the Father. And God the Father is the spiritual dimension of the Godhead. Only a spirit man related with in the dispensation of God the Father. And in that dispensation of God the Father, no man saw him. He was the unseen one. There were so many protocols around his presence. If you make one mistake, you may lose your life. And so that first dimension of God that manifested to man was God the Father, which is the spirit dimension of God. The first dimension of man too that will be created 
is man first as a spirit. The next dimension of the Godhead that manifested to the ages is that unseen God became flesh. The next dimension of man that will also manifest is that spirit that they created, a body will be made for the spirit. The last dimension of the Godhead that manifested to the ages is the Holy Spirit, which is a typology of the soul dimension of man. The Holy Spirit is actually one of the, the, you know, the, the personalities of the Godhead that exhibits emotions. When you come before the Father, you will rarely, you will rarely connect with him through emotion. It's government. Laws. But with the Holy Spirit, you can cry and he will understand your tears. He is, the, he, is the, he is the part of the Godhead that understands that part. Mind you, when they were designing man, there was a statement there that captures the truth of the things I share tonight. It says, let us. So it was not only one dimension of the Godhead that contributed in the creation of man. When man fell, it was the part of man that was having an issue that they sent to come and fix his own part in man that fell. That was why it was the son that came. The son is the body dimension, the flesh dimension of man. That is why it was Jesus that has to come to save man. That is not, is not the father. The father could not come because his own part still remained stainless. The spirit of man was not contaminated, but his flesh has rebelled. So they need to deploy that particular part of the Godhead that, that is the one that created that, 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 that part of man. He's the one that will come and fix it. This is why it was Jesus that came. When a child is born, everybody becomes excited and will bring gifts and all of that. But we begin to see from the days of the patriarchs that no child enters the earth without princes and warlocks and all kinds of other spiritual creatures. I began to preach and teach here on Tuesday about this side of the kingdom. How it has been thrown into utter violence and princes have taken possession of it. And if any man must institute anything... I said on Tuesday, for those who were not here, I said, you cannot build anything until you've bought land. It's, 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 it's applicable to this physical world. If you are moved with zeal, you just save money and then you have not secured your land document properly. Then you went to build. Although you gave so much of your years to it and many resources, at the end of the day, an authority in the land can show up and pull down your labors of many years. It has been the fate of many people. You can't build a family until you have bought the land the family will be built on. And you only buy land through priesthood. You journey to the foundation of the city and you write your name there. So that when princes ask you who are you, you tell them to refer to the document that you possess a land first before you did anything. A business is not permitted to rise in this world until you buy the land it will stand on. How can you build a family in a world as dirty as this and you have not bought your land? The day princes will be here to come around your space, the only reason why you can banish them is because you have legally claimed that land. Mind you, there's no free space in the world again. The whole world has been thrown into violence from the days of John the Baptist. This side of the kingdom suffered violence. Only violent men can lay claim on their inheritance by force. It took violence to make you sin. This is why after the act committed, you begin to feel guilt. Because that guilt is a message that this is not the normal inclination of your, your heart. This is not what you want to do. If that is what you want, you will still be happy at the end of it. They forced you through violence, a law in the flesh, made you by force to comply with the nature. So righteousness too will be violence. There must be a level of violence. You know, there are many people that look at the word. They just look at the scripture, they read it, they sleep on it, you hide it under your pillow. You know, some people even think that the message time is the boring session of service. They are dancing, rejoicing when the praise team are singing. Once you say, let us open our Bible and the average man starts sleeping. And he does not know that they are making reference to the material that created him. When a car gets faulty, you take it back to the workshop. If anything, if anything goes out of course in your life, the only thing that can fix you is the word. It is what produced you that can correct you. Your spare part is inside the word. <laughs> How do you use the word? If you are reading the Bible, when you contemplate on the truth of the scripture, it's equivalent 
to what you do when you download an app. And if you understand how apps work, when you have downloaded it, you still cannot use it until it is installed. It is praying with the word that installs that thing that you just read. Or else it's a head knowledge. It can be in your head, but it's not life in you yet. The only way to turn this knowledge into life is still priesthood. Um, everything I'm saying is pointing at prayer. And when you pray, you don't, you don't go and say, Father, is this how we watch us and we we'll die? Spirits don't understand that thing you say. You come with strong reasons. Nothing is stronger than the word. Lord, your word says, mighty men in this kingdom are not, they, they are not wrestlers. They are lawyers. Men who can understand a constitutional ground and they will not take no until they win. You stay with God. And when you go to God, you go with the word. Never, you know, I'm amazed when I see people want to use human wisdom to contend with spirits. The devil is encamping around you and you are bringing African proverbs. Say, our, our people say, e? <laughs> if you see a frog, if you see a frog running in the afternoon, something bigger than it is for sure. There was a wisdom above you. Solomon handled it and that, that falling cherub still corrupted him. Leave your wisdom. Run to the word. Hold it. Even Jesus had to say it is written. Hold it. You know, on Tuesday, when I got to my lodge, God's servant, Pastor Michael Rocco, he reached out to me and said, I observed that you were holding back. <laughs> he says, losing off. And the fact is, it is out of honor. There is, there is a way you honor a man to an extent that you, you, are, you are even careful the way you, you walk around him. And so I was so conscious of myself on Tuesday. I'm saying this because I want you to celebrate yourself. Thank you for making me feel at home. Hallelujah. So in the scripture we're reading, he says, and without him there was not anything made that was made. The next verse says, in him was life. And the life is the light of men. Please, can you tell your neighbor, the life is the light of men. I will explain something. And only those who were around on Tuesday, of course, will have the foundational basis upon which this thing I'm about to say will be built upon. Life is supposed to directly come to man. God is supposed to give man life directly. But I shared something on Tuesday. I shared something that man did that made that he can no longer relate with life directly. So God needed to break down life into light. And so God put a technology in the spirit of this man that can reconvert light again back to life. So that in this fallen state that he is, the only way he can be redeemed, he cannot relate with life. The economy is high for him. So they will break down life into light. That was what scripture meant when he says in him was life. But that life will be given to men as light. If God wants to help you, he will give you light. He says, awake thou that sleepest. Arise from the dead and Christ shall give you light. We are still talking about the word. That same thing you refuse to read. That same thing you continue. You know, I've seen so many hours devoted you know, to, and we, you see, for, for most of the times, we believe that, you know, in spiritual exercises, prayer is one of the most powerful tools. And of course, I have, I have nothing against it. In fact, I give myself to prayer. But the ministry of the word, it can never be overemphasized. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away. Prophecies will fail. Tongues will fail. You see that word? That word you are refusing to give. Mind you, the tool of transformation. You can remain an egg in the life cycle of a butterfly. You will see an egg, a lava, a pupa, 
then you will now see a full blown butterfly. Everybody will be born as an egg. Nobody is born in a superior version. There are two spirits has kept inside time for any man who wants to change, who wants to evolve. Anyone who don't want to become a shame at the end of his life. This is why there is nobody that arrives any place by luck. And so men must go and start looking at the script. In Psalm 119 verse 89, the Bible says, Forever, O God, thy word is settled in heaven. Where were you in the time that God says he knew you? You were inside Jesus. You, Jesus is like a library inside heaven. And so you are one of the, the knowledge inside that library. You too, you were the word of God that became flesh. Because once upon a time, your spirit was just a set of words. It's not, I told you the second Adam will show you things in the first Adam that was not revealed. You too, you were the word of God that became flesh. Just like the, the second Adam, the powers in time will come for you. And so tonight, my teaching is the price of manifestation. The devil does not fight dreams. He does not fight prophecy. He does not fight goals. He does not fight aspirations. The devil fights manifestation. You can, you, you, you can buy many books and write all your goals. Satan will not even make the book get missing. You can continue. After 40 years, he will still be saying, by God's grace, one day, when I grow up, he loves, you can write anything. He didn't stop the mouth of Isaiah from declaring unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The government will be, heavy prophecies didn't stop it. Let them declare it. Let it be written. Let's see how it will come to pass. In Revelation chapter 12 verse 4, the Bible says the dragon was waiting in front of the woman for her to give birth to her male child so that he may devour him. He, did need, he didn't come against the woman. He was waiting for her to bring forth that thing. Which thing? The kingdom of God is within you. The reason why Satan is interested in you is what you are pregnant with. There is a dimension of God only you can bring into time. And so before, before anything starts, like Jesus, certain creatures will come from nowhere and say, where is he that was born king of the Jews? You think it's only God that knows who you are. Men can use astrological means, use stars, and tell your identity. Our parents who grew up in the village, they have native intelligence. They know many things, many pathways that men can use to derail you out of your path. For Jesus, they came. You think they didn't come for you? Where is he that is born savior? Where is he that is born deliverer? The day they were naming you, everybody is happy. This child, there is something about him. It's not only heaven that is interested. There is a kingdom. Can I share something with you? Hallelujah. Please, if you are blessed, say amen. He says, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Not on earth. In. And which earth? There are treasures in earthen vessels. It is this earth they were talking about. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done inside earth as it is in heaven. Which way? Mind you, the sad part of this scripture. Thy will be done in earth is. There is not. There is no detail. There is no means in it. It's not only one heaven that there be. The, it, we, we only find our habitation in the first heaven. The second heaven is a habitation for wickedness in high places. The third heaven is God's place of habitation. And so when God was saying, I will use him, and that thing God was saying, that thing will deposit a skill in you, a gift. There's another kingdom also that is referred to as heaven too. That also have an intention for your life. A prophecy too. They declared it as you entered. Because when Jesus arrived, they say, where is he that is born king of the Jew? So listen, if God gives you a voice, a good voice, if God gives you intellect, if God gives you beauty, at the end of the day, everybody will fulfill purpose. It's just a question of whose kingdom script did you fulfill? Because there is also a script, an alternative destiny in the, in, in, in the document of darkness that this is what this child will be. And the way you will know, there is a law in your flesh. Your spirit is a set of words. Also your flesh, there is a, a, a document is trying to... Mind you, everybody's flesh will not exhibit the same tendencies. I'm saying all these things to get to the price of manifestation. 
before any man answer present from the earth, he would have won a battle. It's not, they don't give anybody breathing space. No child can enter and begin to walk in the accuracy of God's call for his life. Princes will resist you. And so a man will through warfare. Only through warfare will he be able to answer the call. At some point, our generation was plunged. You know, I like to call us the millennials. The internet fed us. We were not, we, we, we didn't know what that thing is. It was almost equivalent to the region Satan had to take Jesus to. Just so that a temptation can be built. And what region was that? The Bible says it took Jesus to an exceeding high mountain. And there was one purpose behind that whole excursion. From there, he showed him the glory of the world and the riches thereof. There was a technology furnished to help you sit on your bed and behold all the glory of the world. <sighs> Many of the lusts and the cares of life, the pressure, it is streaming from that mountain. Many of you think you are a failure because you saw somebody you believed you were mates before. And you are monitoring the things they are uploading. And then you are now using that as a medium to compare yourself. And scripture says, them comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. There are times and seasons for every man. Satan did not wait. He drew a whole generation and said, come to an exceeding mountain. On the internet, you can be anything you want to be. We have very happy pictures, but we are sad people. 10,000 friends, but you are lonely. It's a virtual world. That was where he took Jesus to, just so that one temptation can be built. All these things will I give to you. Is that not the temptation of our age? The prize of manifestation. Mind you, the biggest enemy against a man is not Satan. It's his flesh. I shared something on Tuesday. And for those who were not around, I suggest that you please listen to the tape. There were two statements God made concerning Satan when they were, of course, dishing out his judgments as touching the fall. He says, dust you will eat for the rest of your days. And number two, on your belly, you will go. You will eat dust. You will capitalize. You will only find expression in this creature only through his flesh. But you'll be finding that expression from a defeated position. That is what it meant by on your belly. That expression, you will not be finding it based on you have legal ground to operate from that place. Because the day he knows the truth, the truth will make him free. And any time a man wants to contemplate on the things of eternity, there are many impulses in time that will remove your mind immediately. Try and fast tomorrow and watch how everything in your life will start shaking. Just say, I want to give this day to God and I want to just isolate his will for the season and watch the way, the, the things that will take you out of the house, you will be surprised. Mind you, if you decide that you want to go and attend, you know, a funeral or you want to go to a birthday, not, nothing will distract you. There are things spirits know. There are things spirits attack. There are things that spirits challenge. And anytime a man begins to give himself to things that can create that transition, you will never shift from an egg until you behold the word. It is, the Bible says, we all with unveiled faces, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the sun, we are transforming to the same image from glory to glory. While you are reading the word, there is something the word does to you. It begins to improve you from the inside. And mind you, any change that will happen to the man must first happen from the inside. If you use political means to lobby your way and attain things physically first before they even register spiritually, time will, 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 it will correct that abnormality. Enter a relationship. Enter a marriage. Enter business contracts. Don't erect a structure spiritually and watch how any time any creature that has access to the word of the spirit say we shall see. Everything you have built will crumble. It's only things that have foundation in the world of spirits. Only those things survive the wind and the waves. Mind you, mind you. Let's pray for one minute, please. One minute. One minute. 
Our prayer is, Lord, give me my word. I have a strong conviction, a strong burden in my heart that God wants to create an intervention. God wants to open the seasons for men. Are you tired? It's a good time to pray now. Are you dissatisfied? It's a good time to pray. Brother, sister, there is a scripture that is in your head. It's a good time to begin to install it now. Let it go from knowledge into life. The diseases of the Egyptians shall not come near me. Carry that in and pray with it now. It shouldn't remain a knowledge. It's not meant to be a knowledge. It's not meant to be in your head. It was meant to be in your life. Sister, that delay can shift. There is a scripture that should pop up in your heart now. Carry that scripture. Don't let it escape. Do warfare with it. I am a sign and a wonder unto many. Thou art my strong refuge. I am like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Anything I do succeeds. Is somebody praying? I can never fail. I am the head and not the tail. I have more understanding than the ancients. Ah, Jesus. Is somebody praying? Saka pagataba. Veske prendo fogo zavila tanimu. You already have so much word in you. Carry some of those words now and turn it to life. Install it. Install it through prayer. My family who sit in darkness, my region that sit in darkness, through me they will see a great light. It says the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, Galilee of the Gentile by the way of the sea. The people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. I am the light of the world. I am a city set upon a hill. I can never be hidden. I cannot be ignored. A grace of influence is upon me. Visibility is on me. Can somebody install it? Ye are gods. All of you are children of the Most High. I'm a God. I'm a God. Can you install it? And thou shalt decree a thing and it shall come to pass. Kai, 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 Kai. I wish you were tired. I wish you truly desired a shift. You will contend. Don't pray with emotion tonight. Carry the word. Carry the word. Put it in your mouth. Declare it. Declare it. With long life, he will satisfy me. He will show me his salvation. I shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord. My going out and my coming in is preserved. one more minute one more minute don't get tired one more minute i cannot end like this this is not the end of my story i cannot end like this carry the word and edit your life carry the word and edit your life every dead organ everything failing in me a life-giving spirit is in me if this spirit that rose up Christ from the dead can dwell in your mortal body, he will quicken you. I am quickened. I am quickened. I am revitalized. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Ha 
transition this is a mountain of transfiguration you can't remain who you are as you behold you are transformed your eye must see something tonight some of you you will catch a glimpse of your true identity and then you will say from the beginning it was not so this was not my real this was not my real description what has happened to me from the beginning it was not so can you carry the word and correct what is wrong Amen. Amen. Please. I hate to interrupt this prayer burden, but we yet have a journey ahead of us. A few more minutes and then we we'll trust God for manifestations, for visitations, and for unusual shift into seasons. You may be seated. God bless you. And so in the light of the violence in this side of the divide, the Apostle Paul began to draw our attention to something that was the core of many of his admonitions. So he began to speak to Christians, Christians, believers. He says in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1, Seeing then that we are surrounded with so great a cloud of witnesses, he was talking to believers let us lay aside every weight. Then he told believers and the sin that easily beset us. Listen, Satan is not interested in taking you through a roll call of sin every day. He doesn't have a catalog of sin that he wants you, you know, to perform every day. He wants to find one sin that is compatible with your lust and establish a stronghold around it so that you labor all through your life, rising and falling until the day you meet an unfortunate end. And so he wants to identify a besetting sin. And he has an advantage. 
he had dealt with several generations of your bloodline. So he knows the particular loss that is compatible with where you are coming from. He has handled your ancestors. For some people, it's pride. The pride is, is, is like a genetic trait that flows from one generation to another. For some people, it's lost. They even brag about it and say, in our family, our own, our own. Apostle says, lay aside every weight and the sin that easily beset you. See, tonight, I'm not interested in that pretense where men, you know, dress like cherubs, appear as though they have never faltered in their life. And unfortunately, it is the story of your redemption that bless men. Not trying to portray yourself like a being that has never faltered in anything. The strongest of men in this kingdom are those who are weakest before God. In this kingdom, maturity is dependency. In this kingdom, maturity is dependency. The more dependent you are to God, that is how spirits know that you are matured. And mind you, growth in this kingdom is not change of size. Growth is resemblance. The more you look like the pattern, spirits know you are old. In the light of this fact that many things will be tested for many years, they will just be trying the sin that you enjoy. So, they'll bring this one. You'll probably fall for it and you are crying. But there's one sin that they found out that as you did it, there was a sense of fulfillment he gave you. They even saw that you, you, you premeditated sin, calculated sin into a future you have not seen. Ah, they say we have found his lost. It is that sin they will build a routine around your life every day. So you have to be marking register. Any day you climb the mountains and you begin to behave like a cherub, they say, bring that sin. <laughs> it's because we didn't bring this one all along. He thinks he, you can overcome anger, overcome stealing. But if it is that one, they identify. It, the day they want to bring you down, they will say, bring it. So today I'm talking about the prize of manifestation. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who shall climb his holy place? The Bible says, he that has a clean hands and a pure heart. The devil has pulled a whole generation to an exceeding high mountain and from there lost. There are many people chained to pornography. They would never have been in this issue if that, and mind you, for many of the times when you solved the internet, you had no intention to look at anything. There are things that just pops up. If you're not a man of prayer, <laughs> let me tell you something about the flesh. The flesh has a will of its own. The flesh can choose something and your spirit will have another interest. And if unfortunate, if you're fortunate enough that your flesh is bigger than your spirit, you will always be in remorse because the things you don't want to do, you will see yourself doing it. So if I call, if I take a sample of 10 young men from my generation, I am persuaded in all honesty, more than 8 of them will be battling with that spirit. It is an exceeding high mountain. They didn't know it was a spiritual location. Man is not supposed to know so much like that. And mind you, all this knowledge is not the knowledge of the Holy One. All these things are meant to impact many things on you. Just so that I will be sure nobody will misquote me tomorrow. I'm not criticizing knowledge. I'm not speaking against knowledge. I am saying a man must put a filter to the gate of light and the gate of sound. It's not everything that should enter you. There are temptations you will fall for. You didn't fall that day. You fell the day it enters your heart. The Bible says guard your heart with all diligence because out of that is the issue of life. I watched my generation. I watched how many of the people in my room, even on campus, you know, during my undergraduate, the challenge was so serious that Sometimes I'll walk into the room and meet my roommate watching porn. And he's an FCS brother. One day, in our MSC class, a guy thought that his earpiece was well connected. He didn't know. So he was just watching porn at the back seat. To the hearing of everybody in the class and the lecturer, I, I, I want to imagine the way he felt when mind you, the person you are in the secrets, that is who you really are. When no eye is watching you. That time where you secured all the possible entrance routes, you, you close the window. You know, I see people want to sleep at night, they, they close the door, they, you know, close the window, 
carry cotton again and close. Some people go ahead and use a padlock inside again and, and, and lock it. The things that kill, they don't need that door to enter. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So the weapons of our warfare cannot be carnal. All, you see, this is why men go to bed and they don't wake up. Sometimes the reason why you should die is because of the kind of confidence you had in the security you have put. So they will just say, so in this, you know, many spirit beasts, there are men whose conversations is a regular topic in heaven. Job was minding his business on earth and spirits were discussing about him. And God was saying, have you seen my servant Job? In a day of transition like this, where the baton of mantles will be passed from one generation to another, everybody must campaign in the word of the spirit. You will campaign so that spirits will choose you as their candidate. You can paste your campaign posters through your lifestyle so that Michael can begin to discuss. There's one boy in Abuja. Have you seen the way he travels every night? And when they want to talk about you, they will, you know, all your pretense is hidden from men. But spirits are not in that deception. They know who you are. And so when spirits want to refer men, when they talk about who should hold certain scepters, spirits will begin to call their respective candidates. And mind you, in the day of transition, when the season of your manifestation comes, the angel that does a similar work like you will show up. Oh my God. Who is Gabriel? Gabriel is the angel of the presence. He says, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence. Who is Zachariah? Zachariah is a priest that stands also in the presence. It is an angel of the presence that will appear to a man of the presence. It is that thing you are practicing secretly. It's that thing that will attract what creature will come for you. Who is Joshua? Joshua is a captain of the physical host. Who came to Joshua? He says, I am the captain of the host of God. Who is Satan? Satan is light bearer. Who did he come for? Jesus, light giver. Anything you are doing, something that does that thing like you in the host will show up a time. So you cannot pretend for long. Those who pretend in this, in this, in this particular story, you will not see them for long. Mind you, that thing you are building, the wind and the waves will come and try it. And so a whole generation has been plunged. A whole generation has been casted into darkness. Gross darkness trying to master us. And I saw a faith that I likened to the, the sad reality that the Apostle John the Beloved saw in heaven. I almost shed tears because I found out there were people I respected so much. The best of a man is a man. There were brothers that if they start leading prayer, as though the, the ceiling would tear. Man, I, I envy their utterance. The syllables they use in their tongues, my God. You will, you will say it's an angel that is praying. They have prayer capacity. But I have watched who they are in the secret. And it was a total contrast of the person they are projecting openly. Mind you, God sees in secret. So I saw that the script written for our generation is that look like it, talk like it, behave like it, but don't be it. We will help you maintain that false lifestyle. Just when we thought darkness has won, just when we thought a generation has been mastered, because mind you, you can never be different from the state of your mind. You are, not, you are not better than your mind. Your mind is not better than you. You and your mind are one and the same. As he thinks in his heart, so he is. And so the idea of princes is to broadcast things into airways and allow your eye to see it. Your eye is a light gate. The, the, the thing is just to enter your heart. Nobody will come and tell you do this thing. You already programmed something that if it lands in your heart, your body must execute the state of your heart. Just when we thought all hope is lost. When I thought that a generation has been thrown into, you know, total abandonment. That was where we heard the sound. You don't know how this thing is 
to me. I know where I was. Ali, hey, 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 we heard the sound a prince appeared in light suddenly we found that a man was blowing a trumpet from the mountains of Zion there was a voice that carried hunger inside it I said who is this guy mind you everybody will be doing something in his own territory if you don't expose yourself to the realities beyond your comfort zone you will think you are the best thing that has happened to the body of Christ So I went to download another message. When I heard that sound, there was a yearning, a hunger to want to. You know, sometimes the way this thing comes for me. <sighs> you reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh. You are mighty on your own. Yes, we are all called. Yes, we are all used of God. But some people are called for special assignments. There are destinies that are tied to other destinies. There are those that if they don't manifest, they would have, they would have corrupted an agenda of God. They would, have, they would have complicated and they would have, you know, What's, what's, what's the word I'm looking for now? And so the only term I can give to them, the only thing I can use to describe them is found in Revelation chapter 12 verse 7. The Bible says there was war in heaven. So it means a rebellion started. One angel took responsibility. And on the ground of his showing up, the Bible says Michael and his angel. These are... If you can hear me, please say amen. amen. Please, I want to be sure you are following me. Say amen. amen. In the beginning of that scripture, the Bible said concerning the dragon that with his tail, it pulled down one over three of the stars of heaven, the host of God. Now warfare broke out and they didn't call the angels angels of God again. They say his angel, Michael and his angel. They wield all the spiritual men to Michael. I'm trying to share something. In a day where a captain rises, God will make that man a rallying point for the army of the Lord. He will begin to traffic all men. Go to this one. And so every region must have a captain. In the revival that is to come, it is not going to be a one-man show again. You will have fires of different flavor. Just when you think you have mastered fire, then you will find there's a purple flame burning somewhere. Different from what you have, you have, you have touched. And it is another servant somewhere. He says, Michael and his angel. You can become a captain. How does God secure captains for himself? Your dealing can never be the same with the average man. You will create many parts and God will spoil it. Because for your life, you cannot live for yourself. Another person can choose to travel as he likes. Relocate anytime he likes. For you, the boundary of your habitation is a sensitive detail because there are destinies that will see their light in your light. A captain. How does God prepare captains? He begins to teach you the way of consecration. It is only a captain that can blow the trumpet in Zion. He says, sound an alarm upon my holy mountain. But he says, who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who shall climb his holy mountains? He that has a clean hands and a pure heart. The first dealing of a captain is consecration. God will begin to chisel you. Will begin to put a higher demand of consecration on you. Some things will not be wrong, but you cannot do it. You will watch a movie and you'll be feeling guilty. Your, your use of time is different from the average man. You will do something that is not a sin. And yet, youth, they are holding you to a higher level of 
consecration. For many of you, you are already trying to give up because you think things are falling apart. For many of you, you are already misunderstanding the process that is making you. You will find out very soon that a generation will be referred to you. And when they come, before they start, you will say, I understand. How do you understand? You were molded inside the fullness of affliction. You went through the things you would deliver all that from. And so, God made you a lab rat. You must, you must, and anytime you speak, system will shift for one reason. Upon you is the mark of all the things you have suffered. So Apostle Paul says, let no man trouble me. I bear upon me a mark. The spirits that put men under captivity, when they behold your wrist, they will see a sign of chains. And they don't remember ever releasing you. So you broke out by, by violence. And anywhere you and that spirit meet, if you speak, they will shift. Because there is a mark on you, indicating that you found a way to bring this thing down. If you don't have mark in this kingdom, when you speak, a response will come. Who is the king of glory that we should lift up our head? Don't escape those seasons. Those are the things that make you. Sometimes we, we interpret the dealings of God as delays. You don't know that at the end of the day, most men are just journeying through life on land. From here to Ghana is 45 minutes by air. From here to Ghana by road is 36 to 37 hours. How you journey in life matters. Those who choose to continue to walk, the Bible says, if you run with men on foot and it wearied you, how can you contend with horses? And not all men walk. Mind you, roadblocks are only on the road. There are no traffic in the air. When you get tired, and you get tired of all this drama happening on the land, mount up with your wings. How do you lift your wings? Them that wait upon the Lord. You know what waiting is? It looks like delay. Everybody is running in the rat race. A man stayed behind. He wanted to improve his anatomy. Every night you pray, one feather will grow again, but nobody will see it. One day, the things that take 10 years, it will be compressed into one year, and people will say you are lucky. It's not luck, you are flying, that's why. 36 hours can be 45 minutes. You are flying. It matters how you are transporting. Join your generation in competition. Who is the, who is the this of this? He is, he is landman. Those who are flying, there is space for everybody. Our time is fast spent. Can we bow our heads? <laughs> there is one thing. There is one thing I want you to contend for. If there is nothing we do with this session, there is a button in your heart already. For some people, don't leave this meeting until you have grown your wing. And so there is one way. You will groan until you are clothed. Some of you, the antidote to all the things you are currently, you see, they say there is a family pattern. There this, there's a cause. Go to the air. Leave the land. Journey into the air. Mind you, the powers that crippled our ancestors, the beings that challenged them and made sure no man lifted his head. In Zechariah, I believe. Let's read the scripture. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18. Don't worry, I'll read it out, paraphrase it. The Bible says, an angel called the servant of God, Zechariah, and showed him four horns. And Zechariah asked, what are these horns? And the angel said, these are the horns that have scattered Judah, Jerusalem, and Israel, so that no man can lift up his head. He showed him four horns that were responsible for the predicament of his space. So these spirits, they are not interested in attacking individuals. They attack cities. They attack regions. So they are princes. How can you contend with a prince when you are still an earthling? 
when you are still in contact with the dust that weakens the nation. A prince knows that you are just making mouth. If you want to fight, join me in the air. So if, if they see that you are growing wings, they know that you are... <laughs> Mind you, if you start growing wings, you will become a threat because they know you can ascend to the realm where it matters. Not all men will be able to shift systems as touching territories. Some people will only bring deliverance you know, to their immediate family. And so the realm you operate with is a well. But the same inside of a man that can produce a well. Jesus was begging the Samaritan woman, trying to convince her. In fact, used many, many tricks and told her, in fact, if you know who is speaking to you, you would have asked. And all, all of those attempts now finally worked. So the only thing that can be achieved, he said, the water that I shall give to you shall be in you a well, springing unto eternal life. Please say amen, somebody. Amen. That same Jesus on the last day of the feast stood openly and cried out and said, who is it that tests? Not anybody we are going to force or convince this time. Any man who sustained test by himself, he said, let him come out of his belly, not a well this time, will flow river of living water. So water can be well, water can be river. What is a well? A well is just a source of water for your immediate family. Few houses benefit from it. A river can solve the challenge of water for a whole city. The realm of the anointing you walk in is determinant on your level of test. If you are hungry, it says, blessed are those that hunger and test after righteousness. They will be full. You can be a well. A handful of people will just be telling you, we, we, we thank God that we have a pastor in our family. But when princes register in, in, this, in the territory, your family members too will become victims because no man can join it high enough. Only rivers can challenge prince. So tonight we must lift up our wings. You don't know what you are capable of. You don't know who you are. You may just find out what you are scared of is scared of you too. It's just about you evolving into your best version tonight. And how do we do that? We cast ourselves down on the altars of prayer. You don't stop until you evolve into something. Something will shift from you. Suddenly, that fear that was in your heart before you enter church, as you were praying, a victory note will enter it. Suddenly, a scripture becomes the response to that fear. When you hold that reality, you have solved that problem. Are we ready to pray tonight? Encounter Jesus. Are we ready to encounter Jesus? Can somebody cry and ask for the wing? I'm tired. Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired of arguing with men. I'm tired of being a victim of the movement of princes. I'm tired. I'm tired of being limited by verdicts above my head. I'm tired. Give me my wing. Can we pray? Lord, how long will this business remain small? How long will I continue to labor from hand to mouth? You can carry your wing and increase speed. Ten years can be compressed if you can journey enough. How long would you accept that explanation? The same explanation our fathers, our mothers held on to as the reason why they failed. Not my case, not my case. Is somebody ready to pray now? I cannot end small. You mount up with wings. Hi, Jesus. I can see with the eyes of my spirit. I can hear the sound of a new church rising. Yes, I know this will be men of power. They are coming from afar. They are coming from afar. I can see from the distant horizon. I can hear 
the sound of a new church marching yes I know there will be men of the presence they are rising from afar they are rising from afar Abuja are you praying oh 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 anoint me with fresh oil give me a sign that I came before you tonight anything can happen now believe me anything can shift now can you take two minutes and contend for an encounter I cannot live like this I cannot return this way people now and I declare from the back to the front the left to the right everybody here that dust has covered your talent dust has buried your treasure and now it looks like there is nothing you can rise to in the kingdom I stretch my hands over you right now Holy Ghost wherever they are by fire by fire by fire by fire I release fire upon your altar every dead prayer life come alive now come alive now come alive now come alive now Very quickly we'll 
will be out of here. At the count of three, I need us to shout that name, Jesus. I will only mention some strategic cases as I was, you know, instructed by the Lord. At the count of three, we will just shout Jesus. The powers of delay, powers of manipulation, powers and all kinds of princes that limit men and make sure no man raises his head. The horns, the horns, the horns that fight men. I declare as we shout that name, everybody here under yokes, everybody here being re resisted by horns, resisted by princes, as we shout that name corporately, a visitation of fire will liberate you. Are you ready? I don't care how long it has taken. You will behold the power in the name. And now, Father, I command horns, dec decrees and declarations, causes, all kinds of limitations. I command it to break in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I command, I command a sudden emancipation. that has had a taste of something something and then it was stolen we are going to shout Jesus and there will be restoration everything lost everything lost will be found tonight the bible says when the thief is caught he is made to return sevenfold that which he has stolen is somebody here tonight take my word I am not motivating you these are ancient systems that work the name is our battle are you set I command everything stolen from your life. Everything stolen. Everything taken. Everything withdrawn. That is pleasurable. That is good. That you have missed. I command in the name of Jesus. It comes back. One, two, three. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Please help them. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Everybody here with a ministerial grace and powers have been fighting you, making sure you can never attain your true form, contending with you in the open and in the secret, trying to make sure you don't amount to who must manifest. Tonight, we are going to call that name. Are you ready, somebody? What we will shout is fire now. Fire. At the count of three, shout that fire. Something will come upon your head. And that thing that will happen to your head will affect your destiny. The power of God is already touching ladies in that role. Three ladies. I see a brother here. Your eyes, your eyes have like cobwebs. And I see them removing them. Suddenly you have divine direction now. You can see, you know where to do. You know where to go. You know decisions to take. And so Holy Ghost, touch. Divine direction. You will hear a voice. And now, oh Father, over your people, I declare everybody that you have put your hands upon, that on the account of your interest on them, wickedness and all kinds of delay and challenge begins to hit their life. I declare now, by the fire of the Lord, remember we shout fire. <laughs> I speak to that lady 
that continues to have a dream, giving birth, and somebody comes and snatch your child away. I speak to that brother who continues to see himself in exam halls and he's never completing the exam. They will come and carry everybody's sheets and they will not carry your own. Wherever you are, run out quickly here. There's an intervention for your destiny. Your, the, your life story will continue to be near success. You will come near the palace but you will not enter. Come quickly. Jesus waits for you. It's not only these two people. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will rise in your name. I don't lady let her not enjoy herself please the script says to wake up early and sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow it says the labor of the foolish we react them all because they know not the way to the city but they know a city they want to go but they don't know the way how can man be laboring but spirits will manipulate results have an MSc if you like. Go with a PhD and they can show you that the arm of flesh can fail man. Tonight, the mercy of God will turn your life around. When I stood here, I was contemplating. What would you do, oh God? And he says, I will show my mercy. I will show my mercy. Let me tell you why. There are many sided complications in afflictions. Many times. There are legal grounds that afflictions are built upon. And so the only ground you can appeal or you can demand for help is mercy. If you want to bring legal reasons, the spirits that be, they will win you. Everybody who came out and those who should come out, ask God, show me mercy. Show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Change my life. Jabez says, oh, that thou will change my course. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Yet his mother called him Jabez. 
Yes, he was born in sorrow. Can you cry for mercy? Hear the word of the Lord. He says, behold, I do a quick walk. Behold, I do a quick walk. And it shall be short. He says, I will cause the wind to blow upon this land. And I will bring supplies from far lands. He says, my mercy will remain with you. Even the sure mercies of David will remain with you. Hear the word of the Lord. There are women here. You have one assignment. And that assignment has attracted many attacks to your life. Raise a godly generation. Everything around you is shaking at the moment. From finances to relationship, everything is shaking. Because you were given a ministry to raise a godly generation. Not all men can handle that. And so Holy Spirit, wherever they are, I stretch my hands over them. And I declare strength, strength to be ministered upon them now. Holy Ghost, touch, touch. I command wombs now, wombs, wombs to be purified. I command everything God did not plant in you. We uproot it now, out of them. There are captains in our midst. There are captains, help this lady please. There are captains, captains under attack. I stretch my hands over you. And I command by the fire of the Lord. I declare, manifest now. Please help that brother. Everybody in the front here, please stretch your hands towards me. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Over your children, those whom you have redeemed. Those you died for. We cancel every handwriting. We blot out every handwriting. Any tongue that rises against you, we condemn it. By the blood of Jesus, we erase everything written against you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And now I declare, move into your next season now. That season that has continued to delay. That door of expectation you have been knocking on. And that exam you have not have any capacity to successfully write in the world of the spirit I command now shift to your next season in the name of Jesus Christ who is he that saith it and he cometh to pass when the Lord commands it not by the commandment of the Lord I declare whatever you do shall prosper you are like a tree planted by the river of water and I declare May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob protect and keep you and preserve all that concerns you. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are three people struggling with fear. Under the heavy affliction, fear is a spirit. And I want to rebuke that spirit. Ushers, just go around. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command that spirit of fear suggesting to you that you will fall sick and die you will not live long from time to time it crosses your mind again and every time you are fighting that war and so Holy Ghost over your people I command fear lose them now out of them out in the name of Jesus the spirit of fear please help them the spirit of fear this role I see light fall on this roll. I command the spirit of fear that torments. Loose and let go in the name of Jesus Christ. I break your hold over them now. You have no place here.
least everybody at the front here, congratulations. Congratulations. God has shown mercy. Please rise into your new seasons. God bless you. Please celebrate them. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up to break every chain. To break every chain. 